Copley's mother owned a tobacco store on Long Wharf. The parents, who according to the artist's granddaughter, Martha Babcock Amory, came to Boston in 1936, were engaged in trade like almost all the inhabitants of the North American colonies at that time. The father was from Limewark, the mother of the Singletons of Country Clare, a family of Lancashire origin. Letters from St. John Singleton, Miss Copley's father, are in the Copley Pelham Collection. Richard Copley, described as a ta tobacconist, is said by several biographers to have arrived in Boston in ill health and to have gone about the time of John's birth to the West Indies where he died. William H. Whitmore gives his death as of 1748, the year of Miss Copley's remarriage. John Bernard Colleen, Colleen says Richard Copley was in poor health on his arrival in America and went to the West Indies to improve his failing strength. He died there in 1737. No contemporary evidence has been located for either year except for a family tradition that speaks of his precocity in drawing. Nothing is known of Copley's schooling or of the other activities of his boyhood. His letters, the earliest of which is dated September 30, 1762, reveal a fairly well-educated man. He may have been taught various subjects. It is reasonably conjectured by his future stepfather who, besides painting portraits and cutting engraving, echoed out a living in out a living in Boston by teaching dancing and beginning September twelfth, seventeen forty three, by conducting an evening writing and arithmetic school duly advertised. It is certain that the widow Copley was married to Peter Pelham Pelham on May 22, 1748, and that, at about that time, she transferred her tobacco business to his house in Lindell Street, a quieter, more respectable part of town, at which the evening school also continued its session, and such a household young Copley may have learned to use the paintbrush and the engraver's tool. Whitmore says, plausibly, Copley at the age of 15 was able to engrave in Mesotin. His stepfather, Pelham, with whom he lived three years, was an excellent engraver and skillful also with the brush. The artistic opportunity of the home and town in which Copley grew to manhood should be emphasized because he himself, as well as some of his biographers, Taking him too literally, had made much of the bleakness of his early surroundings. His son, Lord Lyndhurst, wrote that he was entirely self-taught and never saw a decent picture, with the exception of his own, until he was nearly 30 years old of age. Copley himself complained in a letter to Benjamin West, written November 12th, 1766, in this country, as you rightly observe, there is no example of art except what is to be met with in a few prints indifferently executed from which it is not possibly possible to learn much. Variants of this thesis are found almost everywhere in his early letters. They suggest that while Copley was industrious and an evil executant, he was physically unadventurous and temperamentally inclined to a brooding and self-pity. He could have been at least a few good paintings and many good prints in the Boston of his youth. The excellence of his own portraits was not accidental or miraculous. It had an academic foundation. Book of Copley's studies of the figure now at the British Museum proves that before he was 20, whether with or without help from a teacher, he was making anatomical drawings with much care and precision. It is likely that through the fortunate association of a home and workshop in a 
town which had many craftsmen he had already learned his trade at an age when the average art student of a later era was only beginning to draw.